today's video, I am joining the Shark Tank panel as the brand new multi-million dollar investor, Mr. Sister. <laughs> I am dressed for success and I'm ready to react to and try out all the different beauty brands that have pitched their products to the sharks on Shark Tank. And I even got a FaceTime call from billionaire Mark Cuban to help me out. Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, for today's video, I am so excited. It is not even funny. I know you see the title of the video down below. I know you see how I'm dressed today, looking very dapper. Thank you very much. We are going to be doing an episode of Shark Tank on today's YouTube video. Shark Tank for me is one of my absolute favorite shows on television, but if you're not familiar with what it is, it is basically a program where aspiring entrepreneurs and business people go. There's a whole pitch that the sharks get to watch and then they decide if they want to invest money into the companies in order to blow it up and then everybody gets a whole lot richer. Throughout the seasons of the show, there have been thousands of pitches, some becoming extremely successful and making billions of dollars, and some, you know, obviously not so much. We can't all be winners here. But in today's video, we are just gonna be focusing on the beauty products that have been pitched. Now, you guys know, and I'm always talking about how much I love the business side of things. I find it very, very interesting. I've actually been working at my own beauty brand for the last two years, which has been my first time really getting my hands dirty in the business space. But for me, there's still so much to learn. So I figured before I start watching all these pitches and giving my opinions, I probably should get some advice from the biggest shark in the sea. So I FaceTime Billy Mark Cuban. What up, Charles? How you doing, buddy? Hello, Mr. Mark. How are you? Good, man. Just another day in paradise. I love that. Are you literally on set right now? Yeah, I'm filming right now. Oh my god, that is so cool! Yeah, your timing was good. I love that. Well, good morning. I just have a few really quick questions for you. So I'm going to be basically trying out and reacting to some of the different beauty products that I've pitched to you guys on Shark Tank. So I want to know from you, what should I be looking for when I look at these products today? Something that can sell. Yeah. Sales, right? But you know, not not all products start with big sales. Sometimes, if you got the right person selling it, the right marketing approach, and if they're great products, that's what you need. Definitely. I know that you're not really involved in the beauty space, but I feel like that's an not interesting. You do look good. Yes, you do. I would love to know from you, even though you're not involved in the beauty space, do you know anything about makeup? I know you have a 15 year old daughter. Um, I just know that it's expensive mm -hmm. and they buy too much of it. So would there be anything that could get pitched to you guys on Shark Tank that would get you interested in the beauty space at all? You know, I did one, um, not quote beauty product, but it was um, a lip balm called Kiss Sticks. And what happened was when you put on this um, lip balm and then you kiss somebody, they created a little spark. So if you do something like unique and different like that. Oh, last question. What would be one piece of advice that you would give any young entrepreneurs into making it into the business? Sales cures all. You gotta be able to sell and you've got, you see, I'm getting my makeup down here. See? I'm a, a makeup genius now. <laughs> but you gotta be able to sell, right? Because if it's your product and you're not the oh, world's best salesperson really for you, how's it gonna work? With your site, with social media, with content creator, you're always creating, you're always selling and it's non-stop right absolutely the hardest job in the world right because you always have to be fresh you always have to do something new every day to keep people connected that's what being an entrepreneur is all about so yeah you already know what it takes yeah you just gotta apply the same grind to, to selling um makeup i'm getting ready to launch my brand at the end of this year and it's been really interesting i've been doing all the packaging myself all the marketing myself everything zero investors and stuff aside from my own wallet so it's been quite the process yeah. but no, you gotta be agile man you're just gonna learn it's like doing this right yeah okay. I gotta go, they're telling us to be quiet because we're doing some okay. pickups. Bye. Now that we have our advice and blessing from Mark, I definitely feel so much more confident going into these pitches today. I've been in the makeup world for about six years now. I really feel like everything has been done, but my wallet is ready to go and ready to invest. If somebody has a genius business idea, let's get into it. First into the tank is a healthier version of a favorite beauty item. A healthier version. Hello, sharks. How are you? I am the head diva in charge of Opulence Envy <laughs> Beauty, and I am here seeking $75,000 in exchange for 5% of my company. Okay. Okay. She's cute. $75,000 for 5%. That values her company at... Okay, so she sharks. values her Don't beauty company at $1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I do love, love her everything. eyelashes. everything. They're fake. I have created an eyelash extension that is noticeably lighter, more comfortable, and amazingly easy to apply. Magnets. No. Oh my God, not the magnetic lashes. Look, oh, shh. that's very unprofessional of me to act like that on the panel. I'm so sorry. What is the meaning of OpMD? I am an eye surgeon. I'm an ophthalmologist. You are. And so oh, okay. That's cool. So how much does this cost? So the set that you have would run about $245 the entire season. <gasps> what? What? Literally, what the? I launched this company in February. In that time frame, my sales are $685,000. Wow. Wait, February of this year? February of this year. 
You're crushing That's it. What? And what are you using what? as your mode in which oh to my get God. out? Are you on Instagram ads, Facebook yes, ads? I am paid advertising. So what would you use the shark's cash for? What I really need from you, sharks, I need the cash. But I really need help with the back end. What if I give you a hundred thousand dollars for twenty percent? Yes. 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 Oh, she's so cute, though. I love her. My parents would be so proud right now. Oh my God. Good for her. Good for Anika. She is killing it with her business. Now, let's try out some Opulence MD. So this was on the show about a year ago now. So my team ordered this. Was the price still the same? No. Okay. So she's lowered her prices. This is $88. That's still $88. That is so much money. Okay, so in the little kit comes a cute little baggie, Opulence MD. It comes with a set of lashes. Let's see the style that we got here. Ew. You got me gray eyelashes? These are not black. Ew, they're like blonde eyelashes. Okay, <laughs> let's try this out. We have our magnetic liner. Let's do a little, ooh, the suit is a little tight. <laughs> that might be the worst thing that I've ever done, but it's okay. Do not adjust the position of the lash more than once without applying more liner. So we got, we're, this is a one and done type of gig. Oh, uh-oh. Okay, this lash applicator is not giving. All right, can you even see them? You can't even see them. Oh yeah, let's see. What's the durability? I mean, it, do it definitely does feel like it's like stuck on there. If I try to like, I mean like, I can like comfortably like tug on it a little bit and not have it come off, but like, I mean, any sort of pressure. She's gone. I love the idea of using products around the eyes that are safe and approved by eye doctors. I think that that is very, very cool. And I also love that she's obviously doing very well for herself with this business, making a lot of money. However, for me personally, magnetic lashes are just something that I'm not really a big fan of. And even if it wasn't $200, still $88 for a pair of lashes is, I think, a little bit out of the budget for most people. However, she's selling it as a luxury brand. So I guess this is something that you guys are gonna have to try out on your own if you want to, and let me know your thoughts. But for me, I'll stick with my $2 Ardell WSP. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at our next pitch. Next into the tank is a business designed for an untapped market. Untapped market. Makeup? Baby. <laughs> My name is Mael Frias. And I am Saira Frias. And we are the, the Frias Sisters. They're so Luna pretty. Magic is beauty with a Latina vibe. We provide high quality cosmetics all at great prices. So listen up, Shark. Okay, they we are killing this match. $200,000 for 10% of Luna Magic. Yeah, okay, and so they're probably gonna get $2 million. Sorry, you have our Uno eyeshadow palette, which is our first collection uh, designed by my beautiful baby sister. What does this cost me? It's $26 retail. And what does okay. it cost you? $3.40 landed. So those are great margins, yeah, that's which a really is good why margin. this industry is so competitive, but it's a giant task to acquire customers. So I'm gonna offer you a greedy offer, but it's up to you. I'll give you the $250,000 in the form of only a credit line to fund your orders, because you're gonna need 250, not two. And I want 30% of that. Whoa. I actually think that makes sense for you. Um, I'd love, love, the... love to hear a response to my offer first. Oh, sorry. I think sorry. it's the only offer, by the way. Oh. Okay. Kevin um, is going to cross you, their hearts. Opportunity. Of... Barbara, you have a deal. You got it. Yeah. Wow, okay. And you have yourself a great partner, by the way. Thank you. 30%. Okay. So for me, I'm honestly a little bit surprised that they got the offer, but that's also because I'm in the beauty space. So when they kind of were like, oh, this is a Latina owned beauty brand. Love that. Absolutely love that. But they're like, this is an untapped market. And I said, mm -mm, no, it's not. No, it's not. There's so many incredible POC owned beauty brands, black owned beauty brands, Latina owned beauty brands. They're everywhere. So you have a nice little like shader brush, fluffy brush. The quality definitely isn't anything crazy. On the episode, they said we should do some swatches and they recommended the shade Denaro, which is the green reflect one over here. Ooh, okay. It's like a green, red reflect. Let's do a little swatch on the hand. Oh, wow. It feels very, very, very creamy and nice. Oh, sorry about that. That's a pretty shade. It feels really nice too. Okay, work. Oh my God. Oh, that is really pigmented. Oh my God, work, girl. Okay, we're gonna grab a little bit of Diamante with a fluffy brush and see how it blends out on my hand. Ooh. Oh, okay. oh. 
Hmm. Okay, the metallic glittery shades are really, really, really stunning. The matte shades do swatch nicely, but they don't blend out as nicely as I would like them to. Overall, I think that this seems to be a really great brand with good products at an affordable price, which I think is really, really cool. For me personally, as a beauty guru, if I was on this panel, I probably would not want to invest in this brand. After being in this industry for so long and like everybody on planet Earth having a makeup brand, I'm gonna be one of them in the future, so I don't even say that in a shady way, but in order to stand out from the competition, you really need something super unique about either your colors stories, your packaging, the overall like brand identity, or even just the products in general. And while I think these products are pretty cool, I've definitely seen things that are like this on the market beforehand. So I'm out. <laughs> They're gonna sell, they're gonna sell colored lipsticks. Spheres, she, girl, you would never ever, why would you ever put on a mint green lipstick with that blue top and a magenta purple with a yellow top? Uh-uh. So Roscoe, aren't you worried if you walked into a bar with that color lip, somebody tried to resuscitate you? <laughs> Kevin! If, if anybody thought you could sell purple or green lipstick, they do it. They already have the shelf space. They just add another color. Kevin did have a really good point. The cosmetics industry is so incredibly competitive, it's not even funny. So he's right. A lot of the big brands do already own shelf space. So if they thought they could sell bright colors to their consumers, they would just, they would. As cool as a lot of these colors are, reds and nudes and peaches, as you know, boring as it can be, are what majority of the market want to purchase. I'm out. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you. That was the pitch from the Lip Bar. And we do have two products right here to try out in today's video. Which we picked up from Target. Oh yeah, which we picked up from Target. If these girls have been able to get into Target, they are doing something right. Now once again, being in the beauty space, colorful lipstick is not a new thing. MAC has been selling colorful lipsticks for a million years, but I know that they were trying to sell the whole point of like shea butter and natural oils and stuff like that. So if that is something that you truly do care about in your cosmetic application, this could be for you. For me personally, I don't care. I don't want to be mean because I know how hard it is to start a brand. So I'll just, you know, keep it cute, keep it quiet, keep it quick. For me, this packaging, even though they've changed the name, still does not align with the whole idea of like bright, vibrant colors for everybody. The, like the black, like weird, like window type of situation is just giving very like gothic and dark. Obviously the color itself is bright, but it just feels very cheap and not, it's not selling me, it's not selling me what they're trying to sell. But let's try out the formula and see what it's giving. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the formula feels very, very nice. It went on super creamy, it feels nice on the lips, it's not too drying. It is very pigmented as well. I didn't have to do like 18 coats to actually get the color to lay on there. I actually, I, I like it, I do like the product. I think the problem is, and I stand behind what I said earlier, is that the overall branding and the packaging to me does not exactly sell the message that they're trying to give off. Who knows, maybe they're doing millions of dollars in sales and I'm sitting here looking stupid, but that's my, my shark opinion. <laughs> So this last and final pitch I have not seen, but I am being told is insanity. This is from the first ever season of Shark Tank and let's just take a look. Hello, my name is April Morris. I'm the creator of Thin Gloss. I'm seeking an $80,000 oh, investment. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. And I discovered that two ladies at the party that I had met referred to me as chubby. So I began to take diet pills. Sometime later I was driving in my car and I began to reapply my lip gloss in the rear view mirror sitting at a red light, waiting on the light to change. I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if there's a smell or an herb or something that you can put in a lip gloss that may help to curb my appetite or at least make me feel better. <gasps> Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, this is not real. So I started the development by combining all of these ingredients into one product. I think I know exactly what you've done here. I commend it, but I can't endorse it. For that reason, I'm out. I'm a little concerned about the FDA thing with it, so I'm out. I'm out on this one. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, I know too. I cannot believe, that was the craziest thing that I've ever watched. That, that awful. A lip gloss that suppresses your appetite so you don't eat. You, what you have to do to survive as a human being. You don't eat. Obviously in today's world, that would never get onto television, but it was like 15 years ago, anything flew. So to no one's surprise, we can't have you try it. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, it did? Yeah. Somebody shut it down. I don't know if it was her. I don't know if it was the FDA, but this product no longer exists and it should not. It should not. If you are unhappy with your physique and you want to lose weight in a healthy way with things such as exercise, a proper diet, then of course I encourage you doing that after consulting with the proper people 
not her. <laughs> Whether it's your doctor, a trainer, a dietitian, that's literally fine. But this, uh-uh, baby. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. And for that reason, I am out. And speaking of, I think that I'm also out for today's video, you guys. That was quite a lot of fun to look through these different Shark Tank pitches and see if I wanted to invest any of my money into these up-and-coming beauty brands. But that's, of course, just my opinion. I am obviously not a professional shark, a professional entrepreneur just yet. But I would love to know from you guys if you were. If you were a multimillionaire, if you were a billionaire, would you invest in any of these brands? And if so, why or why not? Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. And also, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and show your love and support. It really helps out the channel quite a lot. If you've not already, click that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you guys never miss an upload from me. More than 50% of you guys who actually watch our videos on a weekly basis are not subscribed. So hit that button. It is completely free and you could always change your mind if you so want to, but I promise you will not. If you want to follow me on my socials, they're all just James Charles, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Bye.